Twice a year, Katie Milton, a physical anthropologist at the University of California, makes the trek from Berkeley to Barrow, Colorado, a tiny island in the middle of the Panama Canal. There, at the Smithsonian's Tropical Research Institute, she puts in long, strenuous days studying the howler monkey, one of the loudest animals in the world. At Barrow, Colorado, animals roam free in a true rainforest. Katie Milton gets a rare opportunity to study them up close as they exist in the wild. Howler monkeys will howl at any time of day, but there are certain times of day that are far more predictable than other times. And it's really to everyone's advantage in a troop to give the appearance of being a very strong, powerful troop. So everyone gets together and they chorus in the morning and they give this dawn chorus. And as soon as one troop begins to howl, any other troops that are in the auditory range of this troop will howl back. And the sound gradually travels over the whole island. And if you're in a place where you have a uh, good ability to hear uh, over a wide area, you can hear the sound just come sweeping through the forest as one troop begins and starts the next troop and starts the next troop and so on. Katie Milton had two academic degrees in English literature and a job in publishing when she made the radical decision to change careers and become a physical anthropologist. She believes her background in literature gives her a fresh approach to scientific research. I didn't have so much mindset. I feel that often in a way when I go out to look at things, I see them, I see them as they are instead of how I have been trained to think they should be. Although she has switched occupations, Milton believes there's a logical progression from her past to her present career. How does one go from English literature to tracking howler monkeys on Barrow, Colorado Island? Science is like art. This is not anything original. Millions of people have said this, and it's really true. You know, great art is just a different way of seeing reality, whether it's a different way of composing music or a different way of painting a picture. And science, in a way, is like art too, in a sense, and that it's a different way of looking at a body of factual information and interpreting it. Why are you especially interested in howler monkeys? What are you trying to, to find out? Well, I'm working on one particular aspect of their behavior right now, which is, is what's regulating their population, because in the early 1930s, there weren't more than three or 400 monkeys, and right now there are 1,300. So the population certainly grew leaps and bounds until it reached some uh, threshold. It, it, it seems to be stabilized around a certain number. What I think happens, and what my data suggest happens, is that especially younger animals, juvenile animals, uh, suffer a very high mortality. And that really, since this is a closed population and it's probably reached its uh, maximum threshold at, for this particular time in this particular place, uh, the only way that you can really get a position as a breeding member of the population is for someone to die and open up a slot for you to go into.